When we celebrate, there is music. When we mourn, there is music. Music is the universal language that moves people equally, regardless of culture, class, race, ethnicity, or religious background. Mike Stern, a composer and band leader, spoke to Ned about his role at St. Peter's Jazz Church in Manhattan. But my title here is um, Music Director for the Jazz Ministry. And the Jazz Ministry is a pretty broad thing. It, can enc it, can enc it encompasses our Vespers or our Masses that happen on Sunday nights at 5 every week for, for throughout the whole year. Um, but then there are a lot of other things. We do a lot of festivals. We, we celebrate memorials for great jazz musicians and all sorts of musicians and um, we've we had some historic celebrations um, namely people like Thelonious Monk and Dizzy Gillespie and John Coltrane I still continue to find out uh, people that have been celebrated here and uh, so that, that's been an amazing part of the history here but um, so yeah my job basically what I see is the focus of my job is to bring people together and to um, to write music and kind of facilitate the service and kind of creatively imagine what the service is going to look like and bring new music we're trying to create a lot of new resources and encourage people people to do the same thing. Um, there's, this is sort of a new endeavor and there's not, we don't have the repertoire of Bach or uh, you know, right. a huge um, depth of music to draw from. We do have a really deep jazz tradition to draw from and so what I think people are trying to do now is listen to that and sense that and then draw that into a context of worship. How would, what would a psalm look like you know, in the style of XYZ, you know? So. For me, I don't know how I could really survive without music. I, I, I talked earlier about how, um, for me, it's the it's the one way, really the the sole way, where I can express myself and be unencumbered by my words or my, uh, I don't know, I, I, I find that um, being able to play music is very cathartic and it, and it allows me a way to um, communicate with God and um, kind of offer my deepest sentiments, my deepest feelings and my passions and um, it's my closest, fastest network, I think, to, um, to God. And so I, in times where I'm trying to communicate with God or, or um, work through a certain emotion or a certain time, I feel like sitting down at the piano or playing my bass and, and writing something, um, there's a lot that grows out of that. And I feel like if, if I have a composition that grows out of that time, I, I see that as, um, a friend of mine talked about it as kind of finding you don't write a song, you kind of find something and, you know, thinking of it more as a gift and, and just discovering those things as certain parts. I feel like those are, those are real gifts to me. And so I can't really imagine uh, what my life would be like without music. And I think for all of us, um, you know, it's just such a way of um, lifting people up. And, and also, you I mean, all emotions all around, but despair and sorrow. And I mean, I, sometimes I feel like um, I'm most moved by music when I'm in a, a time of um, 
pain or you know trying to deal with with that somehow so there there's all sorts of uh, emotions that are connected to it and um, I think it's it's such a universal language as so many people have talked about over the years you know it's just a way that everyone is connected and it's a great thing every Sunday we follow the lectionary so we'll, we follow the three-year cycle of going through all the, the readings and so I have a heads up in advance of what readings we're going to have on a particular Sunday and a lot of times I'll share that with our guest musicians because almost every week we have a different group coming into the church it's a very open very inclusive um, reach out into the jazz community to say um, here's you know, here's a chance for you to play and to share your music with us. In some cases, it's very literal. Um, people are writing, um, you know, a Magnificat or a, um, a certain setting from that gospel reading of that week. And then sometimes it's something very different. It might be a, a Jewish musician or somebody coming from a, a different faith background or a different musical background that can offer up something very different within that service. And then we'll still have those readings. Um, maybe there are multiple groups involved or maybe my house singers that are here will play with me and offer up the song. So there's a, there's a, lot, of, um, there's a lot of common ground and there's a lot of uh, kind of rubbing elbows um, here that I think is really cool. There's a way of um, inter um, stylistically all different things that are happening and even within um, you know different generations. So this past week we had basically other than you know you know four-year-olds that were involved we had pretty much every generation involved and in playing together and improvising together and, mm -hmm. and that's all there's a lot of stuff that you can't um, preordain or plan when that stuff happens and that's the best stuff you know it's like things where the, the Holy Spirit is moving it among all of us and creates some pretty amazing stuff we get um, you know new musicians that come in each week and they say wow this is this is interesting um, and uh, then maybe people that that love their music might be drawn and so we get kind of both sides of that um, but what it's interesting to me is uh, seeing how they how they're able to be integrated into the service very naturally because of the fact that they're jazz musicians. They're so used yeah. to just fitting into the moment, you know, and being any any place, any time, and just really reacting and listening to each other. And there's there's a lot of deep connections there. I think that can be made when you think about um, people relating to one another and listening to each other. What happens there with people from different ages or different backgrounds when they come together for the first time and really hear each other and respond to each other? I feel yeah. like what that speaks to in terms of a um, spiritual um, sense and, and also in terms of kind of a human uh, sense and what's going on in the world to, to have that kind of, um, those types of relationships and that dynamic happening is really encouraging. We have three singers, um, my wife Misty and a woman named Shanda Rule and Melissa Stiglianu and I respect them so much, they're just incredible mm -hmm. singers and they've really found a way to lead worship here and to lead co communal song and so um, I, I heard a story the other day that um, some of them had, I, I hear stories you know week by week of them going into other places, maybe it's a, a jazz club or maybe it's another church or it's a school or all right. these different environments and they say oh I tried this from last week or I tried this this type of idea so there's a lot of cross fertilization that's happening mm -hmm. um, you know that, that I think is really cool. The thing I love about it is, well, I give these pieces of music to one group of guys and they play a certain way, and then I give it to another group of guys and they, they play it completely different, and that's that's the beauty of it. So it's it's always real fresh and original, no matter who's who's playing. Well, when I finished college, uh, I found myself um, writing a lot of original music. 
Um, but it was all, at that point, um, I had finished a record called Spirit that was all programmatic music based on different elements of the Holy Spirit. And I was thinking a lot about um, my faith and, and reading and trying to, I, I find for myself that my music, um, whether I like it or not, um, sort of expresses what's going on in my heart and my mind at that time. Sometimes I kind of figure it out after the fact, actually, a, a certain period of time, all this stuff will, will come out and I realize that um, my head has been in a certain place. And, and at that time I was writing, um, I guess what you would call sacred music, but to me it was just, just music, um, things that I had in my heart and, and the music that I was hearing with my friends and, and um, the music of that time. And um, I, I grew up in a Lutheran church actually in Wisconsin and then via upstate New York. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I, my wife and I lived in the city for about a year and we're trying to figure out what was next and how to survive as a musician in the city, as so many people try to do. And um, I was playing sort of a, it was kind of a funny story, on a Sunday morning I was playing a gig at the Bowery Poetry Club. And it was one of those gigs where, um, I, one of those moments in your life where you kind of question what you're doing or why you are in a certain place. And I, I just was pretty discouraged not knowing what was coming up next. And I, I didn't really know anyone there. And, and I, I opened up um, what was then called All About Jazz, this jazz magazine. And there was a big ad that said Lutheran Church seeking jazz musician and composer. And mm -hmm. it was like kind of one of those aha moments for it. You know, I right. could hardly believe it. And um, so I, I applied for it and was really fortunate to, to get this job. I didn't know if such a thing existed that really kind of married um, some dis what I thought were disparate parts of my life between my faith and, and um, my, uh, my music and my composing. And so since then, over 10 years, it's, those have just grown more and more intertwined, I think. Um, Ike's been with us for 10 years. Um, prior to that, the jazz ministry at St. Peter's was led by a pastor, a pastor whose title was Jazz Pastor. We just celebrated yesterday the 50th anniversary of one of those jazz pastors, Dale Lind. The, his predecessor was Pastor John Garcia Genzel, who started this whole thing. The congregation of St. Peter's did a, um, a strate strategic plan 12 years ago to see what we're going to do next with jazz. And our decision was to hire a jazz musician. Um, we spent a good chunk of that year um, after adopting the plan looking for that jazz musician. Uh, in 2004, after a search that included um, uh, interviews of over 40 jazz musicians who applied for the position, um, we agreed on, uh, we unanimously agreed on Ike and called him to do what he's doing now. So Ike's been with us, he was 25 when he started. Um, he's been with us for all those 10 years. Um, what he has brought to it is a real sense of, I'm gonna say it this way, pastoral ministry. Um, so all of the innovations, um, music that is written specifically for, um, in, 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 the, in the jazz idiom, but for our liturgy, um, an Our Father, for instance, that is sung all the time here, um, and a bunch of other things of that nature have all been brought to us by Ike, and then a, a very um, creative way of each week presenting kind of liturgical material uh, that is improvised every week. So psalms, uh, canticles, songs of the church, incredibly different from what they had been before, uh, specifically written for uh, or planned for life in worship at St. Peter's Church. And there's a better connection between the music that happens at that service at 5 o'clock, that's all jazz, with what happens at 11 o'clock uh, on Sunday morning, which is a more classical Lutheran liturgy. Uh, a lot of jazz has um, by intention, seeped into the 11 o'clock liturgy as well. My dad is a great jazz musician and composer and arranger, and he taught at the Eastman School of Music where I went to college and where I met my wife as well. And um, so he really inspired me along the way. And my mom is a percussionist, um, marimba player and timpani player. And, and uh, so I, there was a lot of music happening in the house. My dad's dad, 
uh, was uh, in the Chicago Symphony, he was a cellist in the Chicago Symphony, and, and um, his mom was an opera singer, and, so the, and the, his, their parents were instrument builders. So we have this many, many generations now of, of music somehow in the family. So, um, so it's, it's, I just grew up as part of that. Just this past year, um, our pastors asked us at the end of last year what our goals were for this next year. And the, the temptation is to say, oh, I want to make these really specific goals about what you want to accomplish. And what, it, what I really had to be honest about was the fact that I was feeling really drained um, mm -hmm. spiritually. And I think the pace here is so fast. There's so much going on. And I think I've talked to other pastors or other church musicians and it it can be a challenge a lot of times in a, in a serving kind of capacity to feel nourished yourself i mean when i'm right. in the service oftentimes you know something happens and i think oh uh, this i got to think about this logistical piece right. of what's happening and um, i'm not always present um, in the way that i need to be in the way that i want to be and um, so my goal th for this past year is, has been to try to wrap my head around that and and do a better job of you know, uh, being more disciplined and, and um, is having more time where I'm not in charge of what's going on or, um, or you know, just, just really finding time to, to connect. And um, I've been meeting with a friend of mine who's a pastor as a spiritual director this past year who's really been helping me um, with a lot of different goals and a lot of different ideas. And um, it's, that's been a real gift to me to just think about what's to talk through what's really important, what's really happening, and um, and try to um, try to listen a little bit deeper uh, to what's going on around me and to, to God's voice. So, and yeah, it's making me think a, a lot. And I so I once again I sort of feel like the kindergarten analogy. I'm, I'm I'm very much at the beginning of that process, and I'm hoping that it just that that will continue to grow, and that I'll I'll continue to to um, hear more and sense more, and and uh, I'm I'm. I'm considering, I, I just want to keep, keep learning, you know, and I want mm. to keep growing closer to God, so. I'm Pastor Jared Stoller. Welcome to St. Peter's Church. We are in our church's Narthex lobby, uh, which is where people first come when they walk into this building. So we're standing on the, what we call the balcony, which leads into the sanctuary on the sort of second level up, and it also goes, as you see through those doors, to Lexington Avenue. Uh, and right now, going on in the sanctuary is a rehearsal for an upcoming liturgy. Uh, the Greg Smith Singers will join our uh, St. Peter's Choir for uh, a special offering of music this coming Saturday. And they're in there rehearsing right now. You could probably take a listen. The sanctuary, in fact the entire church, is designed by Lella and Massimo Vignelli, who are the leading designers of the 21st, 20th and 21st century. Um, Massimo and Lella's work, uh, people in New York know mostly from the New York City subway, but here at St. Peter's we know it for our church building. Everything in the church is movable, it's entirely flexible, built on a modular grid so that we can rearrange the sanctuary uh, for whatever need uh, we have. And you see uh, in the space is, is large, it is uh, about two stories high, and there are multiple entries. The entryway here on the balcony, below us from the plaza and the subway, and um, uh, it's a wonderful open space. Uh, we're preparing for Pentecost, and so we've hung all these wonderful red silk banners which are flying about, uh, and it's, as you can tell, filled with a tremendous amount of natural light. It's a uh, fantastic space in the middle of midtown Manhattan for uh, both peace and quietness, but also a great deal of celebration. We're going down the st grand staircase of the church. Uh, we're preparing for a feeding program, so you're going to get a sneak peek of uh, what goes on behind the scenes. Is we'll have a feeding program in a few minutes, and you can see on the edge of the room also is an art gallery, uh, which is uh, curated by our Art and Dec Architecture Review Committee and the Midtown Arts Common um, and chose a variety of New York-based artists. Through these red doors is the sanctuary. And you 
saw earlier today uh, with the Greg Smith singers rehearsing. All number of things happened here. Uh, jazz concerts, classical music concerts, uh, in addition to the liturgies, which are, are many and often. Uh, it's a treasure of a building, and uh, we, are, uh, we see so much happen here because of its great flexibility. And what's it like to, to work with your wife? <laughs> it's fantastic. I mean, we've yeah. had some phenomenal trips, you know, to yeah. different parts of the world where we've been able to share this music. And we, we got to go to Norway a few months ago with, and we brought, the whole trip was designed around being able to bring our daughters with us. Mm -hmm. And it was the best thing ever. We just had a phenomenal trip. And we met some amazing church musicians in Norway, actually, that we got together with, some, some became really dear friends and um, made some incredible music based on mm -hmm. the, connect the mutual connection we had in the church and our, our beliefs. Um, we were, it's, it's really something special when you find people that come together in a different way like that, that um, we just, we found it to be a really great experience. And, and for Misty and I, you know, to be able to, we've, we've both grown, you know, she comes, she has all this incredible background as an opera singer and singing mm -hmm. musical theater. She, she can just sing just about anything. She's so flexible and, and gifted. had a very intense time over the last few years. My, my dad has been dealing with, with colon cancer for about 10 years. Mm -hmm. And in the last few months especially, it's, it's been a really challenging time. And um, he's actually doing amazingly well. I mean, he's just, he's unreal. Mm -hmm. But he's been able to get, get through everything that he has. He's very, very strong. And, um, but I, as I mentioned before, a lot of the music that I write, I'll write a lot of pieces and afterwards kind of look at you know, this batch of music and say, wow, that's interesting. It's kind of all about the same thing or kind of grows out of the same sentiment. And um, for me, I found that a lot of the music, I'd written a, a setting of Psalm 23 that we played the other day. And um, a lot of the music kind of grew out of that feeling or that, that sense of um, renewal and, and peace. And I also mentioned what I mentioned to you about spiritually of me kind of needing that renewal this year and thinking about that a lot. And um, as things tend to do, God shows you all these pieces and kind of rolls it up into your daily experiences. And, and over a long period of time, I, I just started gathering this music together and I realized we, we were ready to, to go and record. And um, the church supported us to go in and do this, this record, which was such a gift in terms of the timing um, because of what I was going through. And, and also I think the music tends to be related to a certain time or, or tends to be Mm -hmm. integral at a certain point and it that that's what it was for me right now and and the, this poem I mentioned from my friend Cheryl at church had written this piece called Shelter of Trees and so that that's part of it and I, I felt like that title really captured all of the emotions and the, the feelings that I had about this project um, and uh, so we're gonna call the album Shelter of Trees and I'm, I'm really excited about getting it together and it it's just a, it's, it's a real departure from the mass in that mm -hmm. um, the mass is, my dad actually helped me a ton with that project and, and the arranging and the, the writing, he was such an amazing resource for that. Um, but growing out of that fairly planned, fairly orchestrated piece, a lot of what we've been doing at St. Peter's lately is very improvisatory. And I had to take, as a composer, you sort of feel like you're not doing your job if you leave things up for improvisation. It's like, well, you're kind of, taking the easy way out sort of and I remember feeling like that at a few services where we tried it for a psalm and was completely humbled when what happened from this free improvisation was way cooler than anything I would have imagined or preordained in, in my writing and I realized that by giving people in the group um, sort of the license or the challenge to be in the moment and to be spontaneous they realized something really incredible. And they, that risk that I spoke about earlier, I think there's really something to that, that as an improviser, if you play 
oh yeah, I feel really comfortable playing this lick that I've played a thousand times, or I could play this dangerous one that I have to dig a little deeper for and take some risks. That's when really magical stuff happens. And it's not always perfect, but what better, what better connection in terms of our faith and model with God? I mean, it's like we, we aren't perfect. We, right. we, we try our best and we, we, you know, we, we reach for things and God catches us, you know, and the Holy Spirit is there to, to lead us in a different direction. And I feel like so much has grown out of these services where you've been improvising psalms or improvising within songs. And I feel like right now that's why jazz really makes sense to have in a church service. Mm-hmm. It's not because, you know, some particular person played it at some time or another or because it was, quote unquote, the devil's music. Or right. it, It's because we improvise and we're listening to each other and we're relating to one another right now.